<laughs> it is my great pleasure to introduce Neil Godden, our keynote speaker this evening. Neil Godden has served as a business and professional development speaker, trainer, and writer for more than 35 years. He has addressed over 100,000 people from coast to coast to coast. And while he has served many large corporations, the likes of Shell, the Royal Bank, Telus, Subway, and McDonald's, Neil's passion is to work mainly with independent entrepreneurs. He is known as the turnaround guy. And as such, he specializes in working with companies in crisis. In this presentation, Neil will share the best of his powerful turnaround strategies with you. If you have any questions, type them into the chat, and periodically I will stop Neil and relay your questions to him for answer. Neil, take it away. Thank you very much, Roger. Delighted to be with you again, and hello, everyone including uh, people that I work with uh, who are uh, in, the, in, the, in the group tonight. So the question that Roger asked and that many of you or most of you uh, answered was, what does guerrilla marketing mean to you? Well, <clears throat> interesting that it may be, uh, way back in the early 80s, we had a huge recession, the deepest recession since the Great uh, Depression of the 1930s. And I was... Uh, contracted by the government of BC to develop a traveling seminar show on how to recession-proof your business and then how to recover, of course, when the uh, recovery and the revival finally set in. And uh, we made a, a comedy act out of it, my partner and I, a speaker named Bill Gibson. And uh, he and I actually traveled at that show for a couple of years. That was a long recession. And uh, made a lot of money, by the way. We were not, we benefited from the recession for sure. But a big part of that, <clears throat> a big part of that seminar presentation was how to use guerrilla strategies. And it was actually a term that we started using about a year before the first uh, guerrilla marketing book came out um, because it just made so much sense. The people in our audience, the small business owners in Moose Jaw and Fort McMurray and uh, Halifax and all, gosh, towns and little cities everywhere. The thing they had in common was they wanted to survive and revive, but they didn't have any cash. Very little cash, very little credit. So it just seemed to me, it, and it was so close then, <laughs> I'm, I'm dating myself, but it was so close then to the Vietnam War that so many people suffered through that the term guerrilla just kept coming to my mind. We, do, we need you to use guerrilla strategies, guerrilla marketing um, strategies in order to do things that are unusual, unconventional, attention getting, typically fast acting, typically inexpensive, low cost or no cost things that we can do that the average business owner could do. Whether they're in an office or on the street or operating out of their home or their vehicle or whatever it might be. Over the years, it's been a long time since then, Roger. Uh, over the years, my concept around guerrilla has broadened dramatically. It, it, it goes way beyond guerrilla marketing these days. And I use the term guerrilla strategies when I think about what a company can do um, to survive and revive in a situation like we're in right now. So for me, it's about strategy. And when I say strategy, I'm, I think always at the top three, the three that have meant the most to my clients, to myself, and not just when applied in, in a situation that's really daunting, like the situation we're in right now. I mean, this is unique. This is way worse than the, than the typical recession. Um, but what I've boiled it down to over the years, there are three key strategies. There are many, many others uh, in an hour, but we don't have time to get into all the possibilities. But there are three that I find that will be effective no matter what kind of business you're in, what size your business is in, or what your uh, marketing and business development challenges. The first one is organic marketing. Organic marketing is the term that I use to describe business that we build with and through the people we know. Number one, our customers, past and present. <clears throat> uh, 
people in our in our networks, our Vancouver Business uh, Network group, our industry groups, and so on. And this is where the gorilla comes in, and our personal networks. Several of you earlier this evening were saying, you know, we need to, to reach out, I need to find, I need to connect, and so on and so on. It's absolutely amazing uh, to my clients, when they, once they start doing total networking, which includes personal networking on Facebook and so on and so on. And I'll give you an example in a few minutes. Um, but the idea is, is to grow the business organically. And that's why I use the term guerrilla strategy, because it is guerrilla. It's non-conventional, non-traditional, unknown virtually. You know, the idea is that, uh, you know, personal, Facebook, for example, is for personal family, photos, sharing, friends, et cetera, et cetera. And you have your business page for the business. Well, hmm. Uh, you know, uh, uh, well, again, I'll give you an example in, in just a couple of minutes here. The second one, no matter what business that we're in, no matter what we do or, or what our, our, our targets are, or our markets are, is education-based marketing. Once again, unconventional. Historically, it's becoming more and more conventional. What I mean by education-based marketing is positioning ourselves not as just another vendor, but as the go-to guy, the go-to gal in our particular market, our particular industry, by doing things that position us as a trusted advisor instead of a salesperson, an entrepreneur, uh, uh, of a vendor. And again, I'll spend a few more minutes on that shortly. And then the third piece is what people generally think of when they think of guerrilla strategy or guerrilla marketing. And that is the guerrilla advertising piece, the pop-ups that flash up, the, uh, the signs and banners that uh, are going to be outlawed minutes after they're put up because they're too big and they break the zoning bylaws and all that sort of thing. And I'll give you lots of, of fun examples of what people have done. These three in combination uh, are the key guerrilla strategies that, that I work with in my business with, with clients of all kinds, literally. Um, and, and this alone is a little different twist. This is guerrilla um, business development, because when we think of uh, organic marketing as just how we advertise in crazy, zany ways that get attention, well, we're missing all the other alternative, conventional, non-conventional, creative things that you can do to build your business. Now, most of the companies that I work with these days are not turnarounds. <laughs> but for years, after that... Uh, after the two years on the road with our seminar uh, proofing seminar, or uh, our traveling road show or dog and pony show as people called it, uh, I did an awful lot of turnarounds. What would happen is that people would come out of the audience and they said, do you actually work with uh, companies that are in trouble? Uh, no, gosh, our, our clients at that time were a lot of big companies and banks and so on and so on. We put the seminar together just through brainstorming, coming up with alternative ways to build business without money. Um, now, I love that turnaround work so much that for years and years and years, that's what I did, even though my deeper passion was for leadership, team building, communication skills, conflict prevention and resolution, and so on and so on. Um, but now, with this coronavirus crisis, uh, and what looks like it's going to be a, a slow recovery, um, gee, I've turned my attention once again to uh, organic marketing, organic uh, guerrilla strategies, and uh, that's what I'm sharing with you tonight. Let's look for a, a moment at uh, the first piece, organic marketing. What I'm suggesting is that we look for ways to grow our sales naturally so that we can avoid the toxic stress of old fashioned cold calling and you know, door knocking and so on that people used to do. The costly fertilizer of paid advertising that doesn't produce. Um, I don't know how many of you actually use display advertising. Um, everything has gone so much online. Uh, 
But if you are using paid advertising in any form, even online, you may not be shocked to learn that most of it doesn't really pay. It isn't as effective as it needs to be. Why is that? Well, all of the research today supports the finding that people don't buy based on an ad that they see or hear. They buy based on the experience of their friends, fellows, and peers, their friends, family, and peers. That's why we need to reach out organically. We need to find ways to reach the people who are potential customers in, in ways that are guerrilla, unconventional, unusual. So, and, and again, I'm going to give you some examples in a few moments. This is kind of the introduction to what I'll be saying. We have to pay real attention to what I call the new three R's in business. In the old days, there were only two. There was repeat and referral. We've got to get those customers in. We got to get them to keep coming back. We need their loyalty and uh, we need their referrals. Well, now today, my mantra, my anthem is, Referrals are not enough. <laughs> With a referral, you could be actually breaking the faith between people. If somebody gives, so if somebody says, "Oh, you should call so and so and so and so," tell them I suggested it, and I call them up and say, "Who who who referred you?" Uh, so it's not a cold call exactly, but it's what I call a cool call. We only want to make warm calls. And those come <clears throat> when. People know all about us first, and that's why reviews are so powerful. And, and a strategy, a guerrilla strategy that I call introduction marketing, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So basically, organic marketing is where we grow our business naturally, working with and through our existing clients, previous clients, people in our business networks, and this is a guerrilla part, also people in our personal networks. And I'll, as I talk about a, a couple of examples of those things, um, they may help you to answer some of the questions you were asking earlier this evening um, when you were doing your asks. Now, the key piece that I want to share with you right at the start is that organic marketing is a contact sport. It means reaching out to the people in those networks in creative ways that are not salesy, that are not commercial because that's a turnoff, as I said before, because that's a form of advertising. It may not be paid advertising, but if you're using Facebook to promote your business commercially, that's a turnoff. We all know that because we get turned off, and yet people still do it over and over and over again. Your daily feed, how much commercial stuff is in there, right? And most of it, frankly, you know, the paid advertising part is a waste of money. Gorilla makes more sense. Gorilla makes more money. So what do you do? Um, well, for me, whether a client is in crisis, whether we're in a recession or not in a recession, a startup, uh, a next stage development, <clears throat> it all starts with your database. If organic strategies are based on organic marketing, I, I'm sorry, uh, yes, organic marketing, then, we, and, we're, and it's all about reaching out, then we got to start with our database. Most business owners, if they have a database, have a database that's out of date. Uh, if I was to, to say to them, uh, the next point that you see on your slide, we got to start daily business development networking. They look at me and say, what? And I say, daily business development networking, reaching out every single day to people who may know somebody who you need to know because they're on your top 10. Now, uh, Roger, uh, we can't, I can't see the right hand end of my slide. So on the, to the right of uh, the word then, there's the top 10. Is there some way to, I didn't know we'd have a whole bar of, of information down the right hand side. Uh, Paul, maybe oh, there you... we go. There we go. I knew you could do that. <laughs> You're a wizard. That was me. <laughs> oh, that was Paul. <laughs> <laughs> my my tech guy, Paul, just did that. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> uh, 
Go, let's go back up to the top of that slide. Start with your database and then the top 10. So if I was talking to you, if you were a client of mine, and I said, okay, it all starts. It all starts. Does it start with, with organic advertising? That's the far end. Well, that's the fun part. Where it starts is at the core of your business, the people in your business, and the people you know who know people that you want to attract into your business. All right? So if I said to you, <clears throat> the second point, um, you've got to start daily business development networking. A lot of people will look at me, at me and say, well, who would I call? And I'd say, well, the people who are now your customers, people who have been your customers before, um, people in your networks, like Vancouver Business Network, your industry associations, and so on and so on. And they'd say, how would I get all that, that contact information? <laughs> because frankly, most people don't have it up to date. Uh, Hub offers a, a free CRM program. Does everybody know that? If you don't have a CRM program now, go to Hub fast. Don't walk, run, and get yourself on a CRM. So you can not only get your database up to date, but categorize it. Um, and that leads me to the second part of the first one. Start with your beta, beta database and then your top 10. <clears throat> Some of you have said tonight who you want to attract and you're wondering about how to find them and how to get them in. If you start um, with a top 10 targeted prospect list, these are the companies or the individuals, the people, the groups, the se sector, or whatever of your audience that I most want to attract. Uh, they're the lowest of the lowest hanging fruit. They're gonna be the most profitable. They're going to get the best benefit that I can deliver uh, based on the experience of the top people that I'm working with now. So it's kind of like cloning. Who's your top 10 most profitable, most fun, best experience um, that you can deliver, best value to them, and then clone them. Okay, who's, the, who's our top 10 prospective clients uh, who are just like them? And then off we go into daily business development networking. Um, and that is finding people who know the people. And LinkedIn is so wonderful, but it's not limited to LinkedIn. Let me give you an example. Um, water, a bottled water company, private label branding, selling all over the world, literally, with patches of Europe, where, where they've got distributors, patches of Japan, uh, South Korea, uh, across Canada, here, there, and everywhere, most heavily in the States. And, uh, and they had a sales team of about seven people. He asked me to come in and do some brainstorming with the sales team. Okay, let's brainstorm. What do we want to achieve? We want to, to get our brand out there in, in, in other countries and other regions, so, and, and regions and so on um, instead of this patchwork that we've got all over the place. You know, for example, they had a, a chain of superstores, um, uh, supermarkets, and they would have one two, three, four in Greater Vancouver, uh, one in Southern Alberta. Some, uh, and what we needed was fill-in marketing, infill marketing. Um, so I said, okay, well, everybody make a list of people that you know who know the people who you need to know. And everybody scribbled away and we had fun with it for a moment. And it was so limited. Uh, the, a lot of people thought, oh yeah, we can do LinkedIn for sure. Um, uh, but I've only got a small group on LinkedIn. Well, then we need a big group on <laughs> LinkedIn. How do we do that? Education-based marketing, which I'm going to talk about in the next segment here. Um, but first of all, um, I've, I have, but first of all, I'm going to stop right there. I have a confession to make. I don't see on my screen uh, any way of tracking the time. So I've got to turn to Paul and ask him what time it is, Paul. 20 after. 20 after, and I'm going to ask you to give me a five minute mark every five. Okay. Sorry, I hope you'll excuse me, but I felt the need to do that. Otherwise, I could be spending too much time on one part, not enough time on another, and then we get into a little time trap. So, um, so we did some more brainstorming, and then I said, okay, you've got this chain of supermarkets. Okay, good. All right. And uh, you don't want to have one store here, one store there that's distributing your product. 
you know, with a Safeway brand, you want to be right across the, the chain or whatever brand it is. And I said, okay, uh, <clears throat> in your list of contacts, have you listed everybody in your personal network? And you don't need to list them all, but just have you written down personal network? Gee, no, no. You would, you would bother people personally, like family members? I said, yeah, exactly. Except for the word bother. There's no bother whatsoever. So here's what we did just taking that one piece. Um, on Safeway, the person responsible for that piece of the market set out um, a post and uh, need help. Does anyone know of anybody in, at uh, the, uh, the no, does anybody know anyone in the so-and-so company organization, either at regional office or produce manager in a, one of the stores or whatever, I need an introduction to somebody at head office. Immediately, they had a response from somebody who knew the local assistant manager of that store. That person was asked for an introduction uh, to uh, the person here. Thank you, Paul. He just set up a clock for me. <laughs> hey. Um, so instantly, well, instantly the following day, uh, this person, the sales representative responsible for that particular supermarket chain, uh, had an introduction to somebody at the regional office, a nice warm personal introduction once he briefed the person on what he was doing and so on, and they closed business within a month because it just made so much sense and they already had one store that was doing the product with their private label brand and it was wildly successful. It was a no-brainer never would have happened without our, that organic uh, business development strategy. Here's another example. Uh, I prompted things, which I always do. It's kind of my role is to ask the question and then to help to nudge them along towards the answer. I said, how many of you are in one part of a country, but not the whole country? Or you're in Japan, but you're not in Korea or whatever. So we nailed that down and I said, how, have you reached out to the trade commissioners? It's their job to be the matchmaker and connector to help you uh, inter to help you get introduced to the people that you need to know in that target region or country. Never thought of it. So away we go. So the inorganic business building, what we need to do is things that are non-conventional, think outside the box, way outside the box, just like they do in guerrilla warfare. I hate warfare and everything to do with it, um, but it is a, a handy analogy. <clears throat> um, lost customer search and rescue. How many people are in touch with clients that you worked with at one time, but no longer for whatever reason, including they may have been terribly dissatisfied for some reason. What a perfect time right now to do lost customer search and rescue and because it just tucks neatly into this whole organic envelope of reaching out to all the people in your business network. So for example, I have a client in Victoria <clears throat> who is looking at how we're going to revive the business. And uh, we were brainstorming just as we're, as I'm kind of nudging you along to do here. And I said, um, have you been in touch with all your customers yet? old, new, future leads, and so on, um, to let them know that while you really uh, are taking every step possible to keep yourself and your employees and your customers safe and well during the crisis, you want to let everybody know that, hey, we're still in business. We have no intention of folding or going quiet. Uh, we're, we, I want you to know that we're here to, to serve you in case there's anything you need. So we're just reaching out. And then, and then of course, inside that whole envelope, um, asking people on a personal level, which this kind of a situation allows us to do, you know, if they're okay personally, if there's anything in our world that we might be able to do to help them. So we always start those calls that way and then go on to assertively state that we intend to stay in business and survive this whole thing and, uh, and let them know that in case there's something you need, we're still operating, whether in this case it was virtual consultations or live. My clients find that live instead of virtual 
right now in the coronavirus virus situation is far, far more effective in getting appointments and in closing business. So, um, so what they do, those that offer virtual consulting and design, I do a lot of work with the home finishing industry, for example, interior designers, kitchen companies, and so on and so on. Uh, it's become a little bit of a specialty. We talk about how, what steps we take. We let you open the doors. We try not to touch doorknobs. This is when they're doing their, their design consultation. Uh, and they talk about the ways that they respect and keep everybody safe. Uh, uh, so by reaching out, not only to our present customers, but also to future customers, leads that we haven't closed yet, and our lost customers, past customers who didn't re haven't renewed business with us for whatever reason, including uh, your past customers, your lost customers, if you like, is the organic piece in that one. Now, a huge thing for me is what I call customer experience planning. And this is an organic piece as well, because it starts with what I call marketing from the inside out, starting with the inside of you and I as human beings, our emotional connection with what it is that we do, why we love to do it, who we love to serve when we do our work, and what the benefits are to them. And how, and this is the organic part, how we can do this in unconventional ways that create truly exceptional customer experiences. This is what we're looking for. So we brainstorm all the touch points, initial telephone calls. What do you do to surprise? What do you do when a sale is finished? And in, in the case of home finishing, for example, um, the job is done. Um, one of my clients who, who's in the closet and organizing business, um, leaves beautiful woolen blankets on, the, on a shelf in the closets, the walk-in closets that they do with a little card that says, thank you, we love doing business with you, or we loved working with you. Uh, this is an exceptional customer experience. When we get an introduction, not just a referral, but an introduction, we always ask for introductions. And we always explain that, gee, I really appreciate the referral, but if you could introduce me, if you could send a quick email that says, Neil, meet Gary, meet Neil, uh, Neil and Gary, I've talked to you about, to both of you about each other. Now, here you are. And uh, now you have each other's email addresses. Uh, all the best to you. Ta -da. That's an introduction. It doesn't have to be full blown, although we prefer telephone introductions. Um, but when you, and I, and I don't believe, it's not organic, natural to incentivize getting referrals and introductions, you know, uh, because it breaks the faith. You know, we could be getting referrals and introductions that aren't meaningful because somebody's hoping to get a benefit. But the exceptional customer experience means that after we receive uh, a warm referral and inter or introduction that leads to a sale, that we say, say thank you in a way that's really meaningful. For example, I have a, a renovation builder in Seattle who does uh, uh, an average value of about $500 every time he gets a referral or an introduction that turns into a sale. And he delivers the gift in the form of a thank you card that says, your choice. And there tend to be vacation getaways, um, sometimes to very high-end resorts in Washington State or Idaho or whatever, sometimes with flights. Sometimes it's a thousand dollar package, but it's never, you never know. But he always says thank you in a big organic way. He's practicing, they practice marketing from the inside out. The other one that I recommend, and this, I know a lot of you folks uh, tonight are already doing this, but looking for ways to do it more. The gorilla piece in this is that it's unconventional, education-based marketing. Historically, only the gurus were found doing presentations at industry trade shows and so on, or traveling like I did with my seminars and, and so on. Today, you, if you're a subject matter expert, and you must be today, I believe, to be successful, 
you must have a real passion for what you do. And listening to all of you this evening, I can tell that most of you really do, or all of you really do. You're interested in people helping people one way or another. Ilya is a good example uh, with his uh, People Helping uh, People campaign. Today, thanks to the internet, the greatest marketing tool in the history of business, you and I can be gurus. For years and years, I did a, a thing called Marketing Dangerously, a blog and uh, a lot of stuff online around that. Uh, <clears throat> then I switched off for a couple of years and did leadership. Now I'm just sort of rebuilding uh, my website around uh, all of the things that we're talking about right here and now tonight. Um, because the times call for, you know, paying attention to uh, our marketing more than ever. But my, my other passion, as I mentioned earlier, is leadership, team building, communication, which I think is the foundation for organic uh, strat strategies in business because it ensures that not only can we talk about and brainstorm uh, a truly exceptional customer experience, but we can deliver one. If you have staff, partners, anyone that you work with on a regular basis. To, we need to work together as never before to collaborate. Like, for example, I, give a, I advise the leaders I work with to stop managing, stop thinking about supervising and managing, particularly if you've got people working from home temporarily or permanently. Start thinking about collaboration, how you can come up together with the things that are most important to be done and then how to do them, how to timeline them how to do the milestones. To me, that's, that is part of organic marketing, which is part of the whole guerrilla strategy. Here's the thing. Here's my mantra. If I call you, I'm a salesman. If you call me, I'm an expert. Now say this out loud if you like, or quietly or whatever, but say it with me. If I call you, I'm a salesman. If you call me, I'm an expert. And then consider this question. Which side of that equation do you want to be on? Which is going to be best for your business and for you, for your mental health? Do you want to be, and I say salesman with the old gender because I'm thinking of the traditional, old-fashioned, uh, sort of typical salesman. Um, if you're a salesman, you're going to make a lot of calls. How many people like to make calls? Nobody likes to make calls, including the professionals. They've just been trained to do it. And, uh, you know, their dogged determination sees them through. And because of time and experience, they've got thick skins. The average entrepreneur hates to make sales calls. So let's do a whole lot less. Do, let's do more selling. I'm sorry. Let's achieve more sales with less selling. How do you do that? Education marketing. One of you was asking tonight uh, um, about how to uh, connect with people on LinkedIn that know the people that you need and so on. Um, Kevin, I think it was you. And what flashed across my mind is, could you hold a Zoominar? Um, uh, and then you can do what I call uh, invitation marketing. Invitation marketing is a key part of guerrilla uh, marketing. Uh, what it means is that we can make, we can phone anybody we want freely and no fear of rejection because we're selling an invitation. The easiest thing in the world to, to, to sell, in my experience, for example, is an invitation to a wine and cheese reception with a little bit of an educational hook. Uh, and then you've got the gatekeeper uh, on your side. You can phone any company. Uh, interior designers, for example, a client in Edmonton wants to get into working with the interior design community. So they're holding a special event for interior designers only and inviting everybody in North, North Alberta. And they're getting a tremendous response right now as we speak uh, because of no resistance. They call and say, my name is so-and-so, I'm with Company X, and uh, we're holding a webinar and we want to introduce, we want to invitation, sorry, we want to extend an invitation to you, but we haven't worked with your company before, so I don't know who to address it to. Oh, you wanted to talk with, you want to send it to so-and-so. Would so-and-so happen to be in right now? I'd like to introduce myself and, in, you know, do the invitation live and in person if I could. And sometimes you get through, sometimes you don't, but there's no resistance. Right? And you can do that. 
with virtually anything. So education-based marketing puts you on the right side of the equation, being the trusted advisor. People don't buy from salesmen, salespeople in the old fashioned sense, the way we are used to, you know, appointment getters, appointment setters. Do you remember those kinds of language? Those kind of phrases like that? Well, it's a thing of the past. So get customers coming to you and education marketing is the way to go. Here's just a few ideas and I'm gonna sweep through these because uh, they're on the video. If you go back to watch Roger's video, what a great program, Roger, to, to be able to archive all of this material. I don't, I don't mean just from me, I mean for all of your speakers. Here are some key quick tips. Blogging is absolutely essential. It used to be, well, again, the experts blog and the rest of us kind of follow along. No, we are the experts. We are the experts. Blogging is essential. What scares people about blogging is, oh my goodness, I, what a commitment and I'm not a writer. Well, let me give you an example. I mentioned the closet company a few minutes ago. What I'm encouraging their franchisees to do is start blogging, uh, but you don't have to be a writer if you choose a topic that you know and love, it's close to your heart, and you offer tips, tip of the week. So for example, um, a few of them are starting a, a decluttering tip of the week. It's not commercial, it doesn't directly promote or market their business, um, but it's something that's on everybody's mind right now because so many people are at home, at home with their partners, at home with their kids. Um, whether it's temporary or a longer term, because there's a lot of people that ain't going back to the office when this is over, once they, they and their employers discover the possibilities. But organization, cluttering uh, uh, is absolutely core, hot topic right now. So how do you do it? Well, you go to Pinterest and you do tips on decluttering or organization, and you'll see hundreds of poster style uh, uh, listings where they've got the top five, the top three, the top 10, the top 20, etc., etc. You pick off 10 that you like the very best and you say, here are some tips this week on, and away you go. And without being an expert writer or spending a lot of time researching, all of a sudden you've got a blog. And how do you promote it? Well, in your personal Facebook, your personal Facebook, as well as your LinkedIn, as well as your company page on, on Facebook and so on, you just take one of, your, of the, the tip you like the very best and you put that as your tip of the week. You give it a background picture um, because things that are illustrated, with, whether it's with a photo or a video, get infinitely more uh, attention, more action, more click-throughs, etc. cetera. Um, learn mores than uh, old fashioned text entries. Um, and when people click to your blog there, they get the whole 10 or the 20 and a couple of words from you, an intro and an extra, and uh, there you got a blog. Uh, is it long, like an old newsletter? No, you don't need to be. This is what gets in the way of, of people blogging. Uh, at one time, we did our marketing dangerously blog, was one of the reasons one of the, the reasons that I kind of let it go a couple of years ago because I had so many other things to do. But for a while, we were running it daily, if you could imagine. Um, so we're, I'm coming back with a uh, tip of the week on two fronts, leadership and on marketing, business development. But that's another story. Distribute excerpts from each post everywhere. The same content on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. I was just on the phone yesterday with a client who said, I don't have time to do all that social media. I don't have time. You don't need a whole lot of time. You can use Hootsuite um, to distribute the same content. Um, Google doesn't like that as much as doing each uh, platform separately, um, but you can do that. And you can use the same content everywhere. Um, and if people happen to see it twice, hmm. How big a problem is that? Get email subscriptions, harvest. People think that email is dead. Nothing could be further from the truth. All email means is it's another database. Facebook is a database. LinkedIn is a database. Twice, Twitter, Instagram, 
uh, YouTube, another database, different medium. Um, email is, every, is as effective as every other platform. It all depends on your sub subject line. If you're selling something, if it's a commercial message, it's going to fall flat. Look at your opens and they'll be closed. There's nothing there. If it's, if it's self-serving, it's dead. Doesn't matter you, what platform you're talking about. People respond to the help that you're offering. The, and at the same time, that is what positions you as the expert instead of the salesman. This is what gets you out of the equation, gets you on the right side of the equation. Um, so get email subscriptions to your blogs. Use words like join, join us membership and so on and so on. People have a human need, a deep need for belonging, for association. So uh, when, when you have email subscriptions, you don't take a chance on people learning more when they see your Facebook post, you also deliver it by email. Guest blog, both ways, invite people to blog with you and offer your services to blog others. Create a YouTube channel, it's free. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're a star and it's getting easier and easier and easier. Uh, you know, you can have a background uh, that makes it look like you're in a, a newsroom, a television newsroom, if you want, or you're on the beach somewhere. Goodness knows. I mentioned tip of the week already. Pinterest for tips content. I mentioned interview experts. If you need content, speak to groups. Roger needs a speaker every week. If it's self-serving, no, can't do it, can't, can't use it. But you have a topic, like Ilya, for example, one of our participants tonight, um, has, a, has a business called Internet Exposure. He helps people get exposure on the internet. If he was speaking about how his business gets, gets uh, uh, how he, he gets his clients' business on the internet, and it sounded like a commercial, Roger would say, no, can't use that. But Ilya also on the side to keep from laying off his staff started this people helping uh, other people um, program, this social community program. He could come on and talk about um, how, you know, how he, how he set up that program um, and uh, and why and who benefits and so on. It'd be a wonderful evening, I think. Um, and of course, it answers Ilya's question: How do I get more interest, more attention? Um, Ilya probably could do even more with the his uh, organic networking, business development networking, by asking people who they know that know somebody else. He's done that with me. Um, Interview experts, speak to groups, use stay in touch cards. When I speak, and I, not as much as I used to, but when I do complimentary speaking engagements, I have a little card that everybody gets uh, on their chair or on the table in front of them that says, let's stay in touch. And it offers tick boxes. Um, please register me for your blog. Uh, please contact me with regard to a speaker for an organization I belong to. Please contact me with regard to a workshop on this topic for my for my team, et cetera, et cetera. And then it invites them to uh, offer a comment on today's presentation. Hey, simple, easy. In the old days when I was sort of building my business and I, and I really needed this for, for business development, I literally <laughs> just have all this contact information where they've asked me to get in touch with them. There's no gatekeeper, there's no issues. And I'm positioned as the expert and my goodness, I don't have to use stay in touch cards anymore. I haven't for many, many, many years. Um, but if you're doing it, that's a great way to build business. It's a super. And if you are a presenter or if you become a pre presenter, then get yourself out there. Get out to all the meetup groups and so on and so on that fit your target audience. Use your stay in touch cards and your business will grow organically <coughs> in a very, very short time. Uh, another key is to write in industry journals. If you happen to have writing ability, then for goodness sake, leverage it, you know, be the writer. Here's a, here's a case in point that I think is uh, well worth your time, taking a few minutes to look up. Uh, Steve Dotto is this fellow's name. 
And uh, you won't be able to read this on the screen, but you see where it says join, listen, watch, promote, learn, hire, enjoy. Well, here's what the little yellow type says. Join my webinar, listen to my um, podcast, watch my videos, promote your product, um, learn from my courses, hire me to speak, enjoy my vlog. Um, and he, of course, he has a blog as well. <laughs> it's hard to think of a base that Steve Dotto doesn't cover. So if you're looking for role models, uh, which I am right now because I'm just restarting my whole online presence, what a fabulous role model. So stevedotto.com and uh, again, probably really well worth a few minutes of your time. Okay. So quick, more business or more education-based marketing ideas, podcasting, webinars, video conferencing, volunteering, mentoring, press releases, advise the media that you are available for expert interviews. Every media outlet keeps a, a list of people that they can call and they need new people, fresh people all the time when uh, your field of interest is in the public um, um, is in the public uh, eye. Appear on talk shows, same idea. Share tips with online groups. Join online groups, get active. Hold educational events of your own. Invite industry speakers if you're not a presenter. Um, one of my account clients was a chartered accounting firm a few years back. They'd have me in and others in uh, once a year to do professional development workshops, seminars for their clients. All they did was introduce the presenter, and that's it. It cost them a little bit of money. I'm not the cheapest speaker <laughs> in the market, but uh, they felt that it would, they know that it was worthwhile because they used organic invitation, um, uh, an organic invitation process. Not only would they invite their customers, but they would invite their customers to invite their colleagues who are not clients as yet. And it was the, the reason that they were able to expand their business, grow into more and more offices, and rank up a real record of success. So just a few thoughts for you. Um, over to guerrilla advertising, what most people think of as guerrilla marketing, <laughs> which I describe as one of the three pillars of guerrilla strategy uh, in business development. Here's one of my favorites from all time. Hey, Kasia, what are you going to marry me? Now, this is uh, probably not the least expensive example of guerrilla marketing, uh, but how expensive would it be really? You know, to get a roll of fabric, have it on a rod, just like photographers use. Okay, you're looking at a hundred bucks there. Then you got to put it up on the side of the barge. How are you going to hold it? What if the wind comes up? Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd have to secure it pretty well. Imagine that your lady friend or your guy friend, I guess Kasia, probably, perhaps uh, feminine, uh, lived in Coal Harbor or, or in False Creek. I woke up one morning, looked out her window, and there's her name in red <laughs> across this huge banner. Do you think it would get her attention? I think so. Now, not all ideas are that effective, though. I got to tell you a story. This will only take a minute. <laughs> Some ideas are a total blowout. Let me give you an example. Does anybody remember waterbeds? Waterbeds from the 60s and the 70s? Well, one of my clients, H&R Pine Furniture in Coquitlam, uh, they've transformed and mutated into something else these days, but they had this fantastic location right next to the La Heat Highway and, and uh, Highway 1. Trans-Canada Highway, and their business was dead, and it was during a recession, and it was coming up to Christmas. It was that same 80s recession where I was doing my, my traveling seminars, and uh, I said, you guys still got any waterbeds kicking around? Yeah, 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 they're up back somewhere, storage, nobody uses them. I said, I know, but we got to get attraction to your site. We got to get traffic. Wait, right now, all these millions of cars going back and forth, not one of them even knows you're here. Never mind that you do custom pine and other furniture. Nobody. We got to make you 
uh, oak and pine was their, their two species. We, we got to get a 50 foot banner out on that front fence, this wire fence, and we got to get some kind of a uh, helium balloon up in the air above the site where it says furniture sale from a mile away. Uh, and they said, well, what's waterbeds got to do with that? I said, well, we can't afford to buy a helium balloon, but if you've got waterbeds, you probably have waterbed mattresses. Yeah, so we'll use a waterbed mattress. We'll get a tank of helium and we'll take and we'll fill up the tube, we'll paint furniture si a sail on the side and up it goes on the fence. Brilliant idea, right? They thought so, I thought so. <laughs> there was just one problem. There are two thicknesses of vinyl that are used in waterbed mattresses. One's thick, one's thin. I thought it would be smart to use the thin one. It was not that smart. As, as we blew it up, it literally blew up and it threw me 20 feet back up against the wall. And the owner uh, blew <laughs> through a, all the way to the wall on the other side. Uh, but we didn't scrap the idea. No, 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 no. We just used a, one of the thicker vinyls, blew it up, and that along with a, a whole row of little balloons along the fence, they had a hundred foot fence, so we had a hundred feet banner. Order now in time for Christmas. It was just before Christmas. It couldn't have been a better time. And I'll tell you what, it was stunning. <laughs> Everything that was in the showroom that was already made, sold in a matter of days. And the orders that they had literally kept them busy all the way through March of the following year without any additional marketing. It was absolutely stunning. Here's another example. In New Westminster, uh, on the second floor of, a, of, a, of an office building on 6th Street, we had this business uh, in the, in the um, what do you call it, the shared office business, you know, where you can rent a small space or a large space or just um, use the boardroom when you need it and so on and so on. And their business was absolutely dead. This was in the next recession. And they asked me to come in and give them some ideas. And I said, well, once again, visibility is the problem. And that's where guerrilla advertising comes in. And I said, we need a 50-foot banner along the rail on that second floor. You've got th hundreds of thousands of cars going up and down 6th Street. We've got to do this. We've got to do it right away. And they said, no, 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 no. We've tried to do that. City Hall will not allow it. Uh, it's against the zoning. I said, so are we going to let City Hall run our business? Or are we going to run our business? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, uh, you know, we all want to be good citizens. So why don't we just... Here, we'll, we'll phone the city hall and see what, what we can do. So I phoned the city hall and I asked for the bylaw uh, uh, officer and got the bylaw officer on the phone. I said, my name is, and I said, here's the situation. Here's what we need to do. These people are going under and we've got to let the world know and there's no money for advertising that they exist and that they're here in this prime location, the center of Metro Vancouver. And I said, but I understand, tell me we can't do it because there's a zoning issue. But I said, you know, you have temporary huge signs over business or, or real estate developments and commercial developments all the time. That's all we want. We're not talking about a long-term thing. <clears throat> and he said, well, legally, we're not supposed to do it even with commercial properties and so on. And I said, well, what can we do? You know, these people need help, seriously. And he says, well, <clears throat> usually we only act if we get a complaint. And I said, okay, does that happen have, uh, often? Or do you have people actually looking for these transgressions? He said, no, no. He said that we have to get a complaint and then it takes a time to act on it. But he, says, but he said, I'm going away on holiday. I'll be away for a month. So that would give you a month after the first complaint if we even got one. So he said, that would help, wouldn't it? And I said, that would just give us everything that we need. And if we had to do it again on a short-term basis, well, you know, now we know what, what the deal is. And I said, thank you so much for your help. Hung up the phone, bang, and off went the banner, hand-painted, because they couldn't afford a, uh, a, uh, a painter, 
the first one. The second one, we used another organic strategy, and that is barter. The second time around, they traded services. Um, there was a sign painter in the area that needed to use a conference room every now and again for presentations. And uh, so the trade off and we got these professional banners. And of course they add the balloons and this, that, the other, and away we go. In this slide on the right, this is an apartment building to rent. And look, as you see the guy on the, uh, on the ladder uh, appearing to pull off, you know, the little pull tab, like a bulletin board at the Safeway store. Same idea. How many Red Bull cars are there in Metro Vancouver? Does anybody know? You know, uh, I don't know. I actually don't know. But I don't think there are very many. But because they are so distinct, it looks like they're everywhere. Eat here or we both starve. One of my favorites. And this one's been around for years. Sandwich boards. Uh, lawn signs. You know, it used to be just uh, real estate agents that would have their little lawn signs. Um, now, Great Clips, the hairdressing franchise, they got lawn signs. One of my clients uh, in Burnaby uh, used uh, lawn signs every Saturday morning with uh, messages like, big flooring sale today and the arrow. Coming the other way, big flooring sale today, arrow because they're off on a side street somewhere, no visibility at all. This is where guerrilla advertising is critical. And uh, I asked uh, visitors as they were coming into the store the first weekend, uh, how they happened to come by and did they see our uh, lawn signs? One fellow was on his way to the auction, in the auction house in Coquitlam, going to buy uh, flooring and he said when I saw your lawn signs I stopped in here and I bought here I'm not going to the auction because they don't have any guarantees that you get your guys do oh great boom right music to my ears open house see the sign on the right why just use a little real estate sign why not have a great big open house sign with an arrow and Emma Davis be a star but you don't need to be sophisticated so many times people business owners will say to me you know, let's say they have a terrible back street location or no location at all. And I'll say, use a car topper, like gobble giving on the right. And one time a, a person said to me, oh, that is so déclassé, you know, that's, oh, dressing down. I said, well, you know, you're worried about your image. And she said, yes, that would be terrible for your image. And I said, let me offer this thought. There is nothing worse for your image than bankruptcy. So don't, let's worry less. Let's be less Canadian. Let's be more in your face. Let's not worry about sophistication. Gobble giving. Um, a nonprofit uh, organization uses a car top to get some attention. Here is my favorite example. Um, politically correct not. In, <laughs> in Las Vegas, the heart attack grill. Have you ever heard of it? They... Um, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, servers dress as nurses, um, the owner dresses like a doctor. If you can eat um, their 13 pounder or whatever it is that this guy is munching on, you get it free. If you weigh 350 pounds or more, you eat free. Three people have died of heart attacks in the restaurant and literally had to be packed out. <laughs> is this guerrilla marketing? I think so. What about, what about nonprofits, you know, that serve the community? Surely they can't do things that are outrageous, or can they? Look at the first one. There's a trash can. A lot of people get their nutrition from there. So here they put on a nutrition facts um, sticker. Here's the next one. Reach out to an autistic person. Look at that, as if that person was connected to them. So there you are putting your cans of, of dry goods into a basket at the supermarket and there's a child looking up at you from the receiving end. This is guerrilla marketing. Now when money is no object, why not go for the gold? This is my number one favorite example of guerrilla signage. The 3D, that's all just painted on. There's no... Um, uh, sculpture involved here. That's a 3D painted mural. 
believe it or not. I think it's absolutely amazing. So there are some examples uh, that may or may not relate to your particular business. And I see a lot of us in, in the audience tonight are um, involved one way or another in an online business and so on. You may think some of these ideas re don't relate to you. Please, let me end on this note. The outrageous idea in a Facebook post can drive business like nothing uh, we see with these old fashioned on land uh, examples. When you think of online, just think of on land transmogrifying into online. What can we do with the same kind of ideas online? And once again, brainstorming. If you have people that you work with, employees, colleagues, partners, whatever it is, get together, do some brainstorming. My hope is that this little presentation this evening just gives you some food for thought. I'd like to uh, close by saying, let's not end it here. Let's stay in touch. If you'd like to subscribe to my tip of the week blog, which we're just engineering now, but goes up on May the 15th, please visit my website, www.neilgodden.com. If you would like to discuss a personal coaching or a group workshop program, and I do a lot of these, I invite you to join me in a 30-minute complimentary online consultation to see if the feeling and the fit is right between what you're looking for and what I do. I'm particularly interested uh, overall in leadership, team building, um, communication skills, conflict prevention and resolution. By the way, there's a question. Can you please recommend a good book on guerrilla strategies for marketing or an audio book? Um, yes, the original is still a wonderful standalone product, and that is guerrilla marketing. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Neil, on behalf of uh, Vancouver Business Network uh, members and guests, you have, uh, you have um, risen to the occasion. You uh, have given us some great ideas. Uh, uh, I'm just curious to know how VBN's members are now going to apply those ideas in the online world. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. thank you so much for your wisdom and, uh, and audience. Thank you very, very much for your time and your trust. And I look forward very much to seeing you next Tuesday evening for uh, Louise's presentation. Good night. I would normally say safe home, but since most of you are at home and safe, that is a little bit redundant. Good night and thank you.